how to extract yourself from a green screen. I will go through all the steps that get you a good result. Even when the green screen is not that good, we can still make something great from it. I'll use After Effects. But honestly, everyone can use these techniques and follow along with this video. AI is not good enough yet to output a clean green screen key. So this is where the artist still comes in. I think the green screen method is here to stay for a while, but you never know which technology will come in the next few years. So if that happens, then our jobs will be much easier. First step for a good green screen key is capturing your footage properly. In this example, the green screen looks like it, but this is actually a good thing because I can show you how to use a green screen that is not necessarily perfect. Make sure the green screen is evenly lit and avoid those harsh shadows and hotspots. Before shooting anything, you should have the background in mind. You should already know what you want to place behind the actor or the subject. This is key to know beforehand because the two elements will match much better. For example, here I used a backlight to match the sun through the clouds. Or this one, where we used the top lighting for the ceiling lights of the metro station. If you are going to use a handheld camera, then make sure you have 3D markers placed on your green screen. Or simply just place objects near the green screen to get a good 3D track in your program. With fast moving objects, I recommend setting your shutter speed much higher, as high as possible. Because all that motion blur is something you really don't want in your shop. It's going to be easier afterwards when you are keying. These are all the things you need to watch out for before shooting your footage. After importing your footage in After Effects, isolate the green screen using a mask. Apply the key light effect or the Primat Keyer. Primat Keyer is a third party plugin and is really fast and efficient for green screen keying. In Primat Keyer, you simply select your color you want to key out. After that, we can clean up the background and foreground elements with these tools. In the View Options tab, you can select Matte to view an alpha channel of your key. This can be really helpful to have a clear picture of what you're keying. You can tweak some settings within the Primat gear, but I never use these because I will clean it up afterwards. With Key Light, it's quite similar. Here we select our color using the eyedropper tool. Then in the Screen Matte tab, you can clip the blacks and whites until your subject is fully separated from the background. Double check using the screen matte preview. Add a second layer of the key light effect or primate keyer for spots that are hard for the keyer to calculate. This only applies when your green screen is not well lit and is looking pretty. Oftentimes I will still go ahead and rotoscope some elements out of the footage just because some details are hard to do with only a key effect. It can be a bit time consuming, but it's definitely worth the extra work. Use the Roto Brush tool to rotoscope out the frames that need to be isolated. Now go ahead and pre-compose your keyed out element. Now it's time to clean up our key. Let's first get rid of all that green spill from the reflection of the green screen. Add an adjustment layer, rename it to Spill Correction. Now search for Advanced Spill Suppressor. I normally set it to 70% and once again select the color for the green screen. Add another adjustment layer, call it Matte Choker. Go to the Matte Choker effect. Here it depends on your key. In my case I'll set the chromatic softness to 2.8 so the edges are a bit blurred out. Now set Choke to 25 and Gray Level Softness to 50%. To clear it up even more you can add the key cleaner effect. When you are happy with your key light element, you can add the motion blur back into the footage. I use the Real Smart Motion Blur plugin for this. In some occasions, I will add some light wrap around the subject for some extra realism. To do this, simply export your key so you have a fast preview. Now use your environment and blur it using the Gaussian Blur. After that, select the key layer to be the matte then switch to Luma Mat. Pre-compose the layers. Now we'll place the key on top of this layer. Use the alpha, but now invert it. Add a simple choker effect to the key layer and set it to 15%. Now add another Gaussian blur on top of this. After all these steps, you should have a light wrap effect. 
For some shots, we will need to add the shadows back into the scene. Creating the shadows is not easy. But for me, the best and easiest way is to extract the shadows from your green screen footage. Add your original footage back into the scene. Mask out only the shadows. Adjust the mask where needed with some keyframes. Now let's use a black and white filter. Clip the shadow with a curve effect. Then add levels to extract it even more. This technique is a bit tricky to do and it's definitely not perfect, but it's the best cheaty way to get convincing looking shadows. In the final composite, set this layer to multiply. Opacity to 50 or 70% after achieving clean key and shadow. Color correct your footage to ensure consistency between the foreground and background. This step is crucial to blend the two elements together. Playing around with the curves and adjusting the saturation will do the job most of the time. After a ton of practice getting used to keying and compositing, you can get results that look like this. If you like this video, please comment, share with your friends. You know how it goes. Now keep creating and get after your goals. Peace. If you use this exact video for your green screen chart,